that I don't need to go out there and demonstrate and try to change the world or fight the evil forces. All I have to do is bring my attention to this inner stillness through my silence and my vibrations change and I change frequency and my reality changes and I live a different life. Simultaneously, when I'm occupying the same space as everybody else and they're suffering because all these things are happening, I'm seeing their suffering. I have compassion for it, but it's not affecting me. So I can't really feel it. And it has nothing to do with having compassion or not, or being a good person or a bad person. I can, if I'm not feeling something, there's what can I do? I can just feel sorry for someone, but I'm not feeling the pain, or I'm not feeling the suffering. So, th th I'm, and I'm giving you the pearls right now. I'm giving you the key. This is what I searched for for over 20 years, from one master to another master, from one country to another country. All you have to do is bring your attention to this place within your own self, which is here, and it's like this. And it's not moving. And when you pay attention to it and start identifying to it, your vibration starts to raise and you enter into a different frequency. So this is the secret. This is the magic. If there is such a thing, this is it. Now, very quickly, I'm going to explain what I mean by states. Since I was looking to be high, whether if it was through drugs, alcohol, danger, because I love danger. And what the danger brought to me was would make me really high. Or sex, or, or pursuing having sex, because it would just brings this really feeling of high, which is still there. It's not gone, but there's awareness about it. And, uh, and, and gurus, I loved being sitting and being around awakened beings and the unified field they would create. And I still love it. If I come across any teachers or guru gurus that, that I can have the time to go to their satsang or they're in town or whatever, I love it because I can go sit there and tab into the juice and get really high. I love the high. But I realize with every high, no matter how high I get, okay, I'm whacked out on some drugs and alcohol and sex and drug and roll and danger or whatever, and I'm really, really high for a week, but at the end of the day, I always have to come back to myself. At the end of the day, I always take myself to bed. It doesn't matter if I have my beloved with me or not. In that very last moment, I'm always ending up with myself. And no matter how high I get, there's always also a a, a um, opposite of it because we're going from feeling good to feeling bad from feeling bad to feeling good from a cycle that everything's going well to a cycle that things aren't going well and often we report it we report it to ourselves and we report it to our friends oh uh, I've been so Zaratustra I've been so depressed I've been so down uh, I'm going through these anxieties and da 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 da, da. okay? Or, so to start, I feel so great, everything's so good, wow! So my question is, how do you know that you feel good and how do you know that you feel bad? How do you know that? How do you know you have an anxiety or you're afraid and how do you know that you're in love and there's all these good feelings coming out? So, yeah, so don't we have to measure it against something? It's like, for example, I go to Norway a lot, and it snows there. And let's say there is a one foot of snow in, in Norway. Okay, one foot of snow against what? How do you measure it? One foot of snow against a, gr a, z a zero ground which is not moving because the, m the ground is not going up and down. 
So we had one foot of snow, so they measured it against the zero. And then a week after, there's two feet of snow. So two feet of snow against what? Against the ground, which is not moving. That's zero. So if you look at this example, then you, you, we, and pay attention to this, pay attention to this, because you say, I'm feeling good and I'm feeling bad. Okay, so there is a me saying, I am feeling good. So as if feeling good is an object outside of myself because I'm aware of it and I'm reporting it to myself and I'm reporting it to other people. Or I say, oh my God, my mind is going, I have a very strong mind and I have all these thoughts, da 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 da. So there's a me aware of these thoughts. Okay, so where is this me? Where is this me that can see the thoughts when it's very busy and on also when it's very quiet? So don't I have to be somewhere which is not connected to either of it? Don't I have to be somewhere which is witnessing it? That I'm aware of my thoughts being very busy or my mind being quiet? Or I'm <coughs> feeling good or I'm feeling bad? Don't I have to be somewhere neutral? That's what I'm talking about. That's where the real you is. That's where the stillness is. That's the real you. And this other you who's always feeling good or feeling bad, that's the imaginary part of you. That's not real. It's not real. And I'll tell you why it's not real. It's not real because it's not always there. The only real thing in this life is that which doesn't change and that which is always here. Anything else is not real. Because imagine that you, when you get up every day and you walk into your kitchen, does it happen ever that your kitchen is not there? Like three days a week your kitchen is not there and four days a week it's there. Does it happen? I mean, unless you're on some really great acid or <laughs> something, otherwise, if you're in a normal state and mentally stable, then your kitchen is always there. So your kitchen is real. But how come your feelings, you're sometimes feeling good and sometimes you're feeling bad, or sometimes your mind is very busy and sometimes you're not? And how real are, are these thoughts? that they're there and they're not there. If they're real, don't, don't they have to be there all the time, right in front of in your face? If your feelings are absolutely the reality, don't, they have, don't you always have to feel anxiety? Or don't you always have to feel love? How come they come and go? But how come you don't? You're the one who's witnessing and, and observing him and reporting it to your friends. So you are here and the rest of the things come and go. So my friends, that's, this is a whole another realm of conversation which is fifth dimensional quantum awareness, which is nothing new. There's nothing new that I'm sharing with you because all of this has already been talked about in different languages and different teachers with different tastes. It's just this is a new expression of the same teaching that it's already there. So we can talk about this some other time, but I just wanted to explain to you what is fifth dimensional quantum healing and fifth dimensional quantum awareness. The fifth dimensional and how do we enter into fifth dimension? is by raising our vibrations to a higher frequency. How do we raise our vibrations to a higher frequency? By bringing your attention to this place within yourself, which is very still and very silent. That's all you need to do. Just bring your attention to this place inside yourself. It has nothing to do with feeling good or feeling bad. Okay? Because after we're done here, you're probably going to feel really good. But then when you start driving and, you know, you go get back to your home or whatever the drama of the story that we all have, then you may feel shitty. 
So this has nothing to do with feeling good or feeling bad. This is where you can see feeling good and feeling bad. So you bring your attention to it and your vibration starts to rise. So when fifth dimensional quantum healing came to me or revealed itself or chose me that this is what I'm supposed to be doing apparently for however long it wants to use this guy and express itself. I also realized that in order to raise our vibrations to a higher frequency on a group basis, we it's the best way is to use a series of meditations that these meditations will lead us to raise our vibrations. 